Um, <coughs> does anybody know about the stress testing uh, changes that happened a couple years ago? So the, the short story is um, the government said that <laughs> if you're buying a property with a federally regulated financial institution, so basically the big banks, let's just use it that way, say, say it that way, um, you had to, if the interest rate that you of the product you were interested in was 3%, the bank would have to run your numbers, your income and your affordability at 5%. The idea being, well, if you can afford to buy this in our numbers when it's 5%, then at 3%, of course, you're okay. And in the next few years, if interest rates rise, you still should be okay. So they're building in a, a buffer there of, uh, of homeowners who have been pre-vetted to as long as their employment stays the same um, and there are no major health issues and stuff like that, they're pre-vetting a whole layer of homeowners who've, uh, who've passed the test. That if interest rates rise, they're not going to have to panic and sell. They're not going to not be able to afford their property. Sorry? Yes, very much so, yes. Now, the thing that a lot of people don't know, I find, is that um, is what we call the alternative market. So B, B20 only applied to federally regulated institutions. So provincially regulated inst financial institutions, like credit unions, have flexibility and they don't have to follow all these rules. Is that clear so far? The other thing I want to mention, and I don't think I talk about it in writing here, <coughs> is that the magic number... It, it, to me, is a million dollars. And the reason is, and I, and I often say, it's 20 times easier for me to sell a home for $999,000 than it is for a million and one dollars. The reason is, as soon as your purchase price, not the amount of money that you're borrowing, but the purchase price of the property, as soon as it's a million dollars or more, there's a mandatory 20% down and stress, all types of stress testing kicks in. Um, I've literally done creative deals with sellers where you've said, they want about a million, a million, five thousand, a million, ten thousand, but we need the agreement of purchase and sale to be at nine hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars, because it transforms the the funding model for that for that buyer. Is the stress test for <coughs> like prices above five hundred k, or is for any mortgage? It's yeah, for federally it. regulated institutions. Right. I believe it's anything that's not insured under a million dollars as well. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, because you can put less than 20% down and you can, even if you have 20% down, if you're in a certain category of type of borrower and there are tons of different categories, a lender may not be comfortable lending to you, like even some self-employed individuals who make good money, but the certain, a certain lender looks at that category a certain way. Um, one way to satisfy them is to get mortgage insurance. So it costs you something, there's a premium to it, um, but you can then borrow the money. Sorry, I'm sorry. What percentage is that? I don't remember. I want to say it's half a percent to one percent, something like that. It, it makes a difference, especially first. I had a client I was talking to who bought a property for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and his premium was eighteen thousand dollars. He said, you know, it was surprising to me. I didn't. I hadn't saved up that kind of money. He managed to make it work. It wasn't with me. It was years ago. <laughs> 